on it's got alan miller this is sam it and we are back to discuss more of huawei and what is going on between the us and china and google and huawei and and these vendors and someone asked in our last video asked in our last video uh to, for me to give some commentary on the situation with arm that's advanced risk machines and huawei because earlier this morning arm announced that they were sanctioning huawei now this came after the reprieve of the 90 days for uh google and micron and qualcomm and intel and some of those big players so this was pretty uh, much a surprise now it's possible that this news is simply coming late it's possible that arm simply uh, doesn't want to be involved we don't know exactly what their reasoning is we don't know if they're not part of the reprieve but this is really big news for a couple of reasons first who is arm we need to understand who this player is let's step back and look at who the company is uh, they are owned by a japanese investment group so this is technically a japanese company but long term arm or advanced risk machines has been a cambridge england based uh, uh processor and cpu research firm this goes way back uh, to the 1980s they are one of the really really core uh chip designers for the entire industry right for historically really important company um and and probably the most important risk maker today so uh arm is pretty critical in the grand scheme of uh the processor the cpu landscape how they relate to huawei arm and huawei traditionally have been very strong partners huawei's uh cell phones and, and mobile devices, their tablets, all depend on ARM-based devices, as do pretty much everyone. Apple, Samsung, everybody uses processors made, uh, designed by ARM, but made by third parties. It's important to understand that ARM designs processors, but they don't actually build them. So ARM the, does the design, and then you go to someone like Huawei who, and Apple, who will uh, take their designs and turn them into specific processors and then they'll generally send them off to a fab who will manufacture them. So there's a lot of different players involved in a, a pretty normal uh, CPU manufacturing situation. In uh, this case, Huawei has been working with them to make uh, their Kirin processors, which drive their P20 and P30 and, and other high-end uh, cell phones. Uh, they also, unlike most manufacturers, they also work with ARM to design very large high-performance server processors for some of uh, Huawei's flagship server products that are a really big deal right now. So in losing this contract, losing this relationship with ARM, Huawei is being hit more than a normal company would because they very much depend on them for their internal uh, chip design for both their mobile devices and their servers. There's really essentially no other company that would be hit in that particular way by losing a single vendor like this. So this is a, a unique situation and a really big deal for Huawei. Now, obviously, losing your designer doesn't mean you can't make chips, and their fab has already told them that they will continue to manufacture the chips for them, and the next generation of their processor is already in motion and will not, we believe, be affected by this new change with ARM but that's about as far as it's going to go. After that, they've probably got a pretty big reliance on ARM and will need them down the road. So now, unlike yesterday, so we, we knew that Huawei was gonna have to, to move to making a lot of their own products, but one of the things we thought was safe was their CPUs, and they can continue to make the same CPUs that they have, but that's not really useful in an industry that depends on the, the constant advancement of CPU technology. So Huawei faces a real problem down the road. Now, how can they deal with this? Now, of course, sanctions may be lifted and Huawei may be able to get um, their normal supply chain and working with ARM again in the future. That's possible. It's possible that Huawei will figure out a way to bring this expertise in-house and begin uh, advancing their chips on their own. This will be very difficult. The Chinese market as a whole is very nascent in chip design. And so even if Huawei had access to every resource on the market in China, it may not be enough to be able to keep up in this space at this time. China had and probably still has a plan to get up to speed on chip design so that they are not reliant on the West for chip design needs but that is not in place yet. They're a few years away from that. So today this may be a very difficult position for them. 
Huawei could move off of ARM designs altogether. They could decide to move to Spark or Power or design a Chinese-only architecture. There's lots of options, but they're all extremely difficult and unlikely. The, re the reason that the rest of the world works with ARM for mobile devices is because it's so well designed for that purpose. It's very difficult to work with anyone else. Now, another option is they may be able to work with a different chip vendor who is not in the United States and may be able to distance themselves enough from the sanctions to still be able to supply to Huawei. And the believed processor maker who may be able to do that is Samsung. And as we know, Samsung may be the big winner in all of this because they just sit in the perfect position to not be within the United States and hit as a supplier by the sanctions, but not in China and targeted for sanctions. So Samsung might come out of this very, very far ahead. For the moment though, it's still very much unknown. What we do know is that this throws a wrench into Huawei's plans. Huawei is going to have to react much more dramatically now without access to ARM than they could previously. Now, why were we not thinking that this was going to be a problem until this morning? So ARM, as we said, is owned from Japan and is a British based company from Cambridge. Both of those countries are not the United States. Sanctions should not have affected them. In fact, that sanctions are affecting them should be a pretty serious uh, situation for those governments, that their own citizens and companies are being sanctioned because in reality, this is, th this is a loss of revenue for both of those countries, for a very important business to both of those countries, and potentially this could roll into other products and other vendors that both of these felt that it was okay to follow the sanctions uh, at this time means that lots of countries are going to be needing to look at their uh, vendors and their supply chains and wondering how they're going to be affected by this and where their exposures are. How many of their companies may feel that they are unable to continue doing business uh, with any number of vendors uh, based on potential sanctions that may be coming down the road. Now, what ARM has stated, because we only have so much information from them, is that they do have a number of uh, people and technology coming from the United States that has uh, flowed into other portions of the business. So they believe that they have sanctioned U.S. technology inside of their products that are then, of course, majority designed in Cambridge, but then fall under the sanctions because they originated in the United States. They may be correct. That may be completely true. We don't know at this time. And we don't know how much they know. They Because the sanctions came so quickly, it is very possible that companies like Arm are scrambling to figure out where their exposure to U.S. technology actually is. And it may be a very expensive process that a lot of companies want to go down the path of trying to determine uh, whether they have that kind of technology or not in any given product. And until they know, we may see a lot of companies that are going to uh, enact sanctions voluntarily until they're able to figure that out. And for a lot of companies, that may be extremely time consuming and difficult. So this is going to be very complex. But it is very true, this makes it much harder for China to be able to uh, design and manufacture chips in the future. This hits a lot of different businesses and requires a lot of expertise to work around. But there are plenty of Chinese companies that are still able to uh, get US technology, that are able to get ARM designs, that are able to work with fabs and produce chips. So we may see something as simple as a very quick turnaround of new chip makers uh, coming onto the market who are in no way associated with Huawei but from whom Huawei will eventually buy the chips. There are ways to work around this, but they are time consuming, expensive, and difficult. So this is going to be very interesting just to simply see how it plays out. So unfortunately, I only have so much analysis on the ARM Huawei situation, but it is very interesting and it is definitely uh, the largest view into overall supply chain exposures that we've yet seen. Things like the Google and the Micron and the Intel uh, sanctions against Huawei really are not in any way significant compared to this one. This is the one that, that potentially is going to really, really hurt. Uh, it's also potentially going to put ARM on notice that they are no longer able to be a global uh, assured vendor and other companies may begin to worry that working with ARM 
uh, may not be as safe as they thought it was, uh, even though they're not a U.S. company. Being a Japanese company, I'm sure a lot of uh, their customers felt that they were very uh, gapped from any actions within the United States. Uh, so a lot of companies are going to be reevaluating where connections to the United States and to other countries may exist that they have not previously uh, expected or thought through. Thanks for joining me. I'm Scott Allen Miller. I'm going to be doing more of these news reports uh, because the, the Huawei situation is, is very, very interesting, and I'm really thankful for everybody who is joining the channel uh, to learn more and the discussions that are going on. Uh, please like and subscribe. Let people know about the channel, uh, and I'll bring, be bringing you more soon.